we are saying air fuel ratio is equal to AF and is given by mass of air divided by mass of fuel. So what did we say about getting the mass? Mass of, uh, for example, uh, air. We said this is the same as molecular mass molecular mass times the number of moles number of moles of air and what we have to remember always is that the molecular mass of air is going to be a constant as 29 okay 29 you can take it as a kilogram 29 kilograms or if we talk about it in terms of more it can be 29 kilomoles of air so any other fuel uh usually fuel is a hydrocarbons and you can always get the molecular masses and then basing on the number of moles you are able to determine that mass uh, so the mass of uh, fuel also will equal to the molecular mass mass of fuel times the number of moles so where do we get the molecular mass molecular mass is obtained from the atomic masses atomic mass of each atom so take an example eg uh, we are going to take an example of uh, propane take propane propane which we said this is an alkane with the formula C3H8 as a fuel. So in most cases, and uh, in all cases, by the way, once you have such a fuel, and you want to either an analyze the products of, of combustion, or you want to determine the air-fuel mixture, uh, or the air-fuel ratio, in most cases, what you have to do is to write the chemical reaction. So let us look at the chemical uh, uh, equation for the reaction. So we have C3H8 plus we are going to add air. Okay. So we are going to add the air and uh, this is always going to give you carbon dioxide plus water. So if you have air only taking part, I mean oxygen only taking part in this reaction, uh, then you would have these products. But remember, air in a, in a real sense uh, does not have only oxygen. This oxygen uh, comes in air but supported by nitrogen. And uh, so in most uh, reactions, once you're talking about air, you are not basically looking at only oxygen, but you always uh, look at nitrogen also. But in this case, uh, let's take uh, this uh, theoretical analysis and see. Let us balance, first of all, the carbon carbon atoms here. This is three. Here we have uh, three, and that's okay. Uh, we got hydrogen. Hydrogen is two this side. Here we have uh, eight, so we can put a four here, and then hydrogen is balanced. Uh, well, then what remains is only oxygen. Oxygen here is six plus this uh, 4, it becomes 5, I mean it becomes 10. So since we have 2 this side, you can only put 
5 here and the equation will be balanced. Now, these are called reactants and these are products. So we are saying we have that chemical reaction and that is the equation with uh, propane reacting with oxygen giving us carbon dioxide and water. But uh, this one is always uh, at the beginning is called vapor. In other words, water is existing in gaseous form. And uh, at that moment, it is desirable to be maintained like that. The problem uh, that will result um, when this one is not in the form of vapor uh, is when it is in a, in, a, in a liquid form, it reacts with a, some other, you know, some other fuels contain sulfur dioxide. Uh, so sulfur dioxide, uh, I mean, when, when you have a, a fuel containing sulfur and the oxygen has made it burn also, you produce sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide with liquid water would result into something that is going to be corrosive. So, you know, sulfur dioxide plus uh, water, liquid, would produce sulfur, either sulfur, uh, sulfuric acid, yeah, sulfuric acid, which is very corrosive. So how do you avoid uh, this uh, water vapor from condensing? There is always what we call the dew point. Dew point of vapor. So this is the temperature. Temperature. Um, this is the temperature at which the vapor condenses. The vapor condenses at constant pressure. So when this happens, let us assume that that dew point temperature is maybe Tp. Let us call that uh, dew temperature to be maybe uh, Tdp. Okay? So, if the temperatures of the products go below this point, then uh, water is going to be formed. And we have already said when water is formed, uh, it is going to be disastrous uh, because uh, it causes, it is going to uh, result into corrosion of the components that are taking part or the, that are housing the system where combustion is taking place. For example, combustion chamber. So I'm saying if the temperature temperature of the product of combustion if the temperature of the products of combustion of combustion go below the dew point dew point temperature water vapor condenses form water and this is always undesirable Okay, 
So what are we talking about? We are saying that temperatures of the products of combustion must always be kept above this dew point temperature. Avoid this from happening. Uh, so back to our air fuel ratio. We are going to take an example. We are going to take an example. <clears throat> We are going to take an example. If we know by by percentage, here is seventy nine percent nitrogen and it is 21% oxygen. Okay, because we said oxygen does not exist alone when we are introducing it in, the, uh, <coughs> in these uh, reactions of combustion. We have to accompany it with nitrogen. And uh, we are going to see how much of nitrogen is always going to be supplied uh, per maybe kilogram or per kilomole of oxygen. So we have, uh, we have our air fuel, air fuel ratio, and in, in that air fuel ratio, we have 79 kilomole of nitrogen divided by 21 Zero more of oxygen. This is the same as a 3.76 kilo more of nitrogen per kilo more over one kilo more of oxygen. So This means that every, this is what it implies, every one kilo more of oxygen, there is or is a 3.76 3 kilo moles of nitrogen. So we have said every one kilomole of oxygen there is always 3.76 kilomoles of nitrogen. So what does that mean if at all we are going to talk about uh, the Rio the Rio uh, reaction taking place? Because the that analysis is a theoretical. But now when you're talking about the real analysis, you are going to introduce the nitrogen, you are going to introduce uh, uh, that nitrogen gas among the reactants. But since nitrogen is inert and does not react, it will always be present in the products. So at the end of the day, you will also be required to determine the excess uh, area that could have been supplied uh, to result also into some excess uh, nitrogen or if all the air reacted still you might need to determine the percentage of nitrogen that is existing in the byproducts of combustion so the above equation now therefore tells us uh, therefore, therefore, uh, for propane above, for propane burning, uh, we have C3 
H8 plus we are going to have oxygen plus nitrogen but now how much of nitrogen is accompanying this oxygen we have said uh, this is going to be 3.76 3.76 of nitrogen this is air what you have to understand this is air okay which is giving rise to carbon dioxide plus we said we have water then obviously since we have nitrogen here we shall also have nitrogen gas at the end so our task here is to our task is to balance this reaction so here we have carbon which is three here it is going to be three and um, uh, hydrogen is eight this side this side it is uh, it is two so we put four here uh-huh what happens to this nitrogen okay let's balance oxygen oxygen is six here is four it becomes ten so meaning we are going to have five here so if this is five remember inside here theoretically we have one kilomole of oxygen plus 3.76 kilomoles of nitrogen and therefore this air is going to be weighing 4.76 kilomoles uh -huh. so what is going to be the now the, the weight for this nitrogen just get this five times 3.76 so we shall get five times 3.76 and this is going to be 18.8 so that is now the equation for this reaction in a real sense because this we are saying is uh, because uh, in reactions in reactions of combustion oxygen does not exist alone exist alone in air but it is always accompanied by nitrogen so this is a note so it is this note that is uh, leading us to formation of this kind of chemical equation.